dreaming back to the Tang dynasty, unexpectedly became a son. In. Law. Armed with an invincible system, see how Qin Zichuan awakens the power of the world and lies drunk on the knees of a beautiful woman. Book Fan Group 409963, Keywords of the Novel Tang Dynasty's Invincible Sun. In. Law without pop ups, download the complete collection of Tang Dynasty's Invincible Sun. In. Law TXT, and read the latest chapters of Tang Dynasty's Invincible Sun. In. Law. Chapter 1 A Paper Marriage Contract Entering Chang'an. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 A Paper Marriage Contract Entering Chang'an Chapter 0001 a paper marriage appointment to Chang'an in the ninth year of Emperor Gaozu's Wuda reign of the Tang Dynasty. Chang'an City Within Qin Xiong's mansion. Qin Zichuan sat on the stone bench in the courtyard, cursing his mother in his heart. He comes from Licheng, Shandong, and is a member of the clan of Duke Qin Xiong of Igua. Qin Xiong's family was poor, and when she was young, Qin Zichuan's grandfather took good care of her. After he rose to fame, he naturally took good care of the Qin Zichuan family. Qin Zichuan's parents passed away one after another, and Qin Xiong arranged a marriage contract for him in Chang'an. But on the way to Chang'an, Ye was scared to death by a thunderbolt. Qin Zichuan, who came from the 21st century, crossed over to this young man who died young. Being a small landlord in Lichen, marrying a few concubines, becoming a groom every day, and entering the bridal chamber at night is not fragrant. I must come to Chang'an City, which is full of ups and downs. Qin Zichuan held his chin with one hand and muttered in his heart, feeling very unhappy. I don't know whose girl it is, but she was fortunate enough to marry such a charming young master like me. It's really a cheap deal for her. Qin Zichuan, who has been a single dog for thousands of years, constantly conjures up beautiful images of female celebrities such as Damimi and Reba in his mind. In the evening, the servant came to report that Qin Xiong had returned. Soon, Qin Zichuan met the famous Qin Shu Bao. Although he is tall, his face is wax yellow and very thin. But beside him stood two burly men of all sizes. My nephew has met my uncle. Qin Zichuan said with utmost respect. You must be Dalong, you have worked hard all the way. These two are Duke of Lu and Duke of Wu. Qin Xiong introduced on the side. Meet Uncle Cheng and Uncle Wei Qi. Facing the polite Qin Zichuan in front of her, Qin Xiong nodded in satisfaction. One is the demon king Qin Yao Jin, and the other is the top hitter under Li's second dot hand, Wei Qi Gong. When Qin Zichuan first arrived, he naturally showed great respect and respect. Kid, look at your delicate skin and tender flesh, your hands are powerless. How could Xing Nan, that girl, like you, like you? Yu Qi Gong looked up and down at Qin Zichuan, then pursed his lips and said. Who is Xing Nan? Qin Zichuan was shocked. Xing Nan is my first female general in the Tang dynasty. After getting married, you will have to endure it. Ching Yao Jin said, looking up and laughing heartily. Dalong, Li Xing Nan is the daughter of Li Jing. She is the fiancé A. E. mentioned to you in the letter. She was the first female general of our Tang dynasty. Qin Xiong explained on the side. Lying trough. The daughter of the god of war Li Jing. The first female general of the Tang dynasty. Li Xing Nan. Did Uncle Zhu find me a rough and middle dot aged woman? Qin Zichuan's face turned green and white, and his heart was filled with mixed flavors. Kid, why don't you come learn martial arts with me? You won't get beaten every day after getting married. As Wei Qi Gong spoke, he reached out and casually patted Qin Zichuan's shoulder. Qin Zichuan's body shook and almost fell to the ground. Thank you, Uncle Wei Qi, for your kindness. I want to study. Qin Zichuan quickly refused. Learning martial arts with such a big black face like you, how could you recite poetry and flirt with a few young ladies so gracefully? 
Reading is a bird's play, even when encountering wild dogs, it gets bitten. Yu Qi Gong pulled his face and threatened Qin Zichuan. Don't lie with your eyes open. It's no use sending your two little kids to my place to read some nonsense books. Ching Yao Jin said contemptuously to Yu Qi Gong. Yu Qi Gong clenched his nose and magnificently ignored Ching Yao Jin's presence. Qin Zichuan suddenly felt speechless. What a group of ground beetle. Kid, I see you're very dissatisfied. If you don't need the ink in your stomach to compete with my fist. Yu Qi Gong touched his fist and smiled at Qin Zichuan. Lying trough. Heartless. Isn't this blatantly bullying people? Qin Zichuan despised Yu Qi Gong to the extreme in his heart. Suddenly, a flash of inspiration flashed through his mind. Forget about that damn system. He quickly entered the system in his mind. Congratulations to the master for activating the invincible sun. In. Law system. Congratulations to the master for obtaining the beginner gift pack. He suppressed his excitement and quickly opened the newbie gift package given by the system. Congratulations to the master for obtaining attribute points. Do you want to replace them? Force plus 80 wisdom plus 80 agility plus 80 command plus 80 charm plus 80 the upper limit is all 100 points. Replace. At this moment, he felt a huge force surging throughout his body, and his momentum skyrocketed even more. Congratulations to the master for obtaining a random mission to beat General Tang. Do you want to claim it? Claim it quickly. This newbie gift package is so perverted, isn't the reward for completing tasks even more generous? Kid, are you afraid? Yu Qi Gong looked down at Qin Zichuan, who was silent and lowered his head, and laughed heartily. Since the Xuanwu Gate incident and Li Er's accession to the throne, no one dares to provoke him in Chang'an. Bullying children has become his happiest thing. Li Er's princes were often bullied by him. The children in Chang'an city ran away when they saw him, and now that they have finally caught Qin Zichuan, he naturally wants to bully him well. You are at your disposal. Qin Zichuan raised his head and answered calmly. Everyone was momentarily stunned. His aura was vastly different from before, and as for where he was different, everyone didn't know how to start. Big black face, don't bully the children anymore. Cheng Yao Jin angrily rebuked on the side. Kid, if you can't take my punch, then I'll strip you off for the street parade. Yu Qi Gong said eagerly. What if I take it on? That old man took off the street parade. As Wei Qi Gong spoke, he threw his fist at Qin Zichuan. Looking at his fierce black face and hammer like fists, Qin Xiong and Qin Yao Jin immediately took a deep breath. Yu Qi Gong, this old man, is actually taking it seriously. Qin Zichuan is in dire straits. Qin Xiong sighed helplessly and turned her head to one side. He couldn't bear to see Qin Zichuan being beaten up in an unbearable way. But the bet was made between two people, and he doesn't want to get involved. On the other hand, Cheng Yao Jin was about to open his mouth and curse Yu Qi Gong shamelessly, but as soon as his mouth opened, he froze in place. Qin Zichuan did not dodge, but unexpectedly met him with his tender white fist. Isn't this hitting the stone with an egg? Wei Qi Gong was naturally overjoyed to see that Qin Zichuan had not dodged. Qin Urge, I'm sorry. Who made the conditions offered by Pharmacist Li so tempting? With 80 points of force added, Qin Zichuan felt that his entire body was filled with endless strength. He didn't know the level of these 80 points of force in the Tang Dynasty, so he was naturally eager to try. Yu Qi Gong's proactive provocation naturally became the best touchstone. Bang! With a muffled sound, their fists collided fiercely. An unparalleled force spread throughout Yu Qi Gong's body through his fist. 
Bang 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 He took three consecutive steps back before finally standing firm. A sharp pain followed his fist and spread throughout his body. Looking at his drooping arms, Yu Qi Gong was shocked in his heart. Why is this kid so strong? Holy crap this is just unbelievable. Qin Xiong kept her eyes wide open and her heart was filled with shock. What exactly happened just now? End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Three People Walking Together in the Blue House You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Three People Walking Together in the Blue House Qin Xiong stared fixedly at Qin Zichuan, completely stunned by his calm expression. This kid actually punched Yu Qi Gong three steps back. What kind of strength does this require? If it weren't for what he saw with his own eyes, he would never have believed it to be true. Qing Yaojin's mouth was even wider, as if it contained an egg. Your grandfather's grandmother is so amazing, Old Cheng admires it. After a brief shock, Cheng Yao Jin couldn't help but sigh. Big black face, you lost. Cheng Yao Jin reached out and hugged Qin Zichuan's shoulder, pointing at Yu Qi Gong's disdainful shout. Big black face, why don't you quickly take off your clothes and wander the streets? As soon as Cheng Yao Jin thought of the scene of Wei Qi Gong strolling the street, he couldn't help but look up and laugh heartily. That scene must be very eye-dot-catching. This is an accident. Wei Qi Gong explained with a pale face. I was afraid of hurting this Shandong child, so I didn't exert all my strength, otherwise he would have been kicked away by me a long time ago. Big black-faced, are you trying to cheat? If Li Daozong and Chan Sun Wuji find out about this. Before Cheng Yao Jin could finish speaking, Yu Qi Gong bravely took off his clothes. He has always been at odds with Li Daozong and Chang Sun Wuji. If they find out, they will surely make fun of him for not keeping his promise. I'm afraid it will be even more embarrassing than taking off the street parade. Big black faced Wei Qi Gong stripped himself naked after three strikes, five strikes, and two strikes. Uncle Wei Qi, let's forget about the underwear. Qin Zichuan quickly blocked the way. Kid, you still have some conscience. Qin Zichuan rolled his eyes straight. I'm afraid of eye irritation. Wei Qi Gong closed his eyes and shouted loudly as he rushed out of the Qin mansion. The little girl and daughter dot in dot law on Chang'an Street quickly covered their eyes with their hands when they saw this extremely embarrassing scene. In broad daylight, there were actually lustful demons appearing. The patrolling soldiers quickly went up to intercept. But when they found out it was actually Yu Qi Gong, they all turned their heads and left, pretending to see nothing. Yu Qi Gong's thunderous move immediately spread throughout Chang'an City. Big black face is really shameless. Cheng Yao Jin laughed contemptuously. Ah! De Lao He will be reprimanded by His Majesty again tomorrow. Qin Cheong is an honest and kind person, sighed and said helplessly. It's so refreshing. Ching Chumo and Ching Chubi cheered loudly outside the door. These two brothers are often bullied by the big demon Yu Qi Gong on weekdays. Seeing him eat flat today, I can't help but feel relieved. I admire Qin Zichuan even more inside the house. I'm in a good mood today, old Cheng. Tomorrow, Ching Mansion will hold a grand banquet. You must come, my dear nephew. Ching Yao Jin laughed heartily and said. Why hold a grand banquet tomorrow? Qin Zichuan asked in confusion. Brother, you don't know anything. The cow at home didn't have time to commit suicide today, so we can only do it tomorrow. Ching Chumo ran over to Qin Zichuan and whispered in his ear, explaining. Qin Zichuan suddenly realized. It makes a lot of sense. In the Tang Dynasty, it was not allowed to slaughter oxen without authorization. But beef is very delicious. 
So the cows of Cheng Yaojin's family commit suicide every once in a while. This is very scientific, very precise. At this time, the imperial palace is located in the main hall. Li Er, who has just ascended the throne, is brewing tea with Empress Chang Sun. He was enjoying the world of two when he received a report from Chang and Ling. Damn it! Li Er flew into a rage. Bang! The teacup was shattered by him. Why did second brother suddenly get angry? Empress Chang Sun asked Li Er in confusion. Yu Qi Gong, that bastard, is actually wandering the streets in Chang'an city wearing underwear. It's really embarrassing me. Li Er said fiercely. After hearing this, Empress Chang Sun couldn't help but smile. The Duke of Wu had a wild and unrestrained nature, and it's not surprising that he could do such a thing. It's not a big deal, at most it's just a topic of conversation for the people of Chang'an after dinner. Empress Chang Sun advised on the side. You said this guy has been on the battlefield for a long time and was actually defeated by a 15 or 16 year old boy with a punch. Do you think it's embarrassing to lose him? I feel ashamed of him. Li Er said with resentment that iron cannot turn into steel. Who is this son of a family? How could he defeat Duke Wu with just one punch? Empress Chang Sun immediately became interested. The kid from Shandong, Qin Shubao's nephew. Li Er exclaimed angrily. Is it the one who the Duke of Igwa begged his majesty to marry him? It's him. My edict hasn't been written yet, and this kid actually hit my beloved general. Li Er said very displeased. Second brother, you must be cautious. It's rare for Duke Yi of Igwa to make requests. If handled improperly, it may hurt the relationship between the emperor and his ministers. Empress Chang Sun poured a cup of tea for Li Er as she spoke. What if the female general of the Li family doesn't agree? Li Er took a sip of tea and smiled cunningly as he spoke. Inside Li Jing's mansion. Father, Uncle Wei Qi was really defeated by that Shandong kid. As the first female general of the Tang dynasty, Li Xingnan asked in shock. It's not just about defeating, your uncle Yuqi has taken off the street for a walk. Li Jing said with great guilt. If it weren't for him asking Yuqi Gong to take a look, so that the children from Shandong would voluntarily give up this engagement, he wouldn't be so embarrassed. Stripped off the street parade. Li Xingnan's delicate cheeks were immediately covered with a layer of shyness. This damn Shandong kid, let's see how I deal with him. Li Xingnan waved her tender white fist and gritted his teeth, saying. Your marriage was arranged between me and your uncle Qin. Li Jing sighed and said helplessly. Even if I die, I will never marry that bumpkin from Shandong. Li Xingnan angrily left as he spoke. In the Qin mansion, Qin Zichuan sneezed wildly. Ma Dan, who is cursing me? Qin Zichuan muttered to himself, but deep in his heart, he suspected that it was Yu Qi Gong who was cursing him at home. Brother Chuan, you are simply amazing. You defeated old demon Yu Qi with one punch. Ching Chubi said in admiration to Qin Zichuan. Wei Qi, the old demon, has taken off the street and will definitely become the biggest joke in Chang'an. Ching Chumo couldn't help but burst out laughing. Brother Chuan has just arrived in Chang'an, I'll take you on a good tour. Ching Chubi frowned and looked at Qin Zichuan, saying. Qin Zichuan has always been fascinated by Chang'an, and since he has traveled here, he naturally wants to take a good stroll. He greeted Qin Xiong and then left the Qin mansion with Ching Chubi and his brothers. Where are we going? Leaving the Qin mansion, Qin Zichuan asked with a smile. I naturally went to Zueyin Tower, which is the best brothel in Pingkong Square. Ching Chimo said with great admiration, the leader of Zueyin Tower, Su Moon Wan, is an unparalleled beauty that is truly stunning. As soon as Su Moon Wan was mentioned, Ching Chubi's mouth water immediately flowed. That's the happy decision. Qin Zichuan said eagerly. This Pingkong Square is a paradise for men. If you don't play well, wouldn't it be a waste of life? 
End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Is not being arrogant still a young person? You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3. Is not being arrogant still a young person in half an hour, Qin Zichuan and others took a carriage and arrived at Zuoyin Tower. Ping Kong Fong is a famous red light district in the Tang Dynasty. And this drunken cloud tower is the most luxurious brothel in Ping Kong Square. As soon as Qin Zichuan and others walked into the drunken cloud tower, a charming old lady immediately welcomed them. Young Master Cheng, come in quickly. You haven't been here for quite some time. The girl from Zueyin Tower misses you so much. The madam said enthusiastically to Ching Chumo. It is obvious that Ching Chumo is a regular visitor to Zueyin Tower. He gave a lewd smile as he reached out and fiercely grabbed the madam's body. The brothel she provoked was full of flowers and delicate smiles. Call the best girl from Drunken Cloud Tower and accompany my brother Chuan Well. Ching Chumo waved his hand and shouted. The madam smiled slightly and quickly asked a girl to take Qin Zichuan and others to a private room. As soon as Qin Zichuan and others took their seats, several girls walked in. The blossoming girls, like butterflies, surrounded the Zhou people such as Qin Zichuan. The bold actions and teasing words made the three of them blush. In terms of appearance, they are much more beautiful than most of the little sisters in TikTok. But Qin Zichuan sneered and ignored it. Since we have to do it again, if we want to play, we should play the best. Otherwise, wouldn't it be in vain? Bring Su Muran, the leader of your drunken cloud tower. Qin Zichuan said straightforwardly. After a while, the madam hurriedly walked in and said, Miss Nuanyuan can't come. Why is this? Ching Chumo asked in displeasure. Miss Nuanyuan was originally supposed to accompany a few gentlemen, but she was kidnapped by Prince Changsun halfway through. The madam said helplessly. What kind of person is Changsun Gongzi? As soon as Qin Zichuan finished speaking, a group of elegant young masters suddenly caught his eye. Isn't this young master Cheng? The drunken cloud tower is a gathering place for talented and beautiful people. Aren't you a rough person who greatly damages the scenery? Chang San Chong smiled slightly and said contemptuously to Ching Chumo. Ching Chumo suddenly had bulging veins, and Teng stood up. Ching Chubi on the side immediately grabbed his arm tightly. Chang San Chong is the young master of the Chang San Wuji family. Ching Chubi explained on the side. Where did you come from, dog and cat? How dare you scream in front of me? Qin Zichuan gave Chang San Chong a disdainful glance and said calmly. Are you a bumpkin from Shandong? Don't think you can do whatever you want with the skills of a three-legged cat, this is under the feet of the emperor. Chang San Chong stared fixedly at Qin Zichuan and said disdainfully. What do you want? Qin Zichuan suddenly became interested. Fighting, killing and killing are detrimental to elegance. Why don't we fight poetry instead? Chang San Chong smiled cunningly as he spoke. Urine and defecate as you please. Qin Zichuan said disdainfully. Compared to poetry, I cannot compare to you, young master. But reciting poetry. I have read 300 Tang poems since I was young, and I can't compare with you, a ground beetle. Okay. If you lose, Shout, I'm a dog, three times. Chang San Chong said eagerly. A gentleman's word is hard to recall. Qin Zichuan picked up his glass and drank it all in one gulp. Let's write a poem about wine. Chang San Chong confidently said. The reason why he targeted Qin Zichuan was nothing more than to tarnish him and ruin his reputation. If Qin Zichuan marries the first female general of the Tang dynasty, his power will surely increase significantly. This is the situation that the Changsun family least wants to see. How did you recognize me when I first arrived in Chang'an, young master? Qin Zichuan asked with a smile. The appearance of Changsun Chong gave him a bad feeling in his heart. When I first arrived in Chang'an, someone actually knew me and caused me trouble. 
This is definitely a conspiracy. When Prince Qin first arrived in Chang'an, he let old demon Wei Qi take off and wander the streets. Looking at the entire Chang'an, who knows that Prince Qin has a lot of brute force? Chang Sun Chong looked up and laughed heartily. His words were filled with contempt and ridicule towards Qin Zichuan. Stop talking nonsense. If you write better than me, then I'll give up. Otherwise, you'll be dogs. Qin Zichuan suppressed the smile in his heart and said. Okay. It's a deal. Chang Sun Chong was afraid that Qin Zichuan would change his mind and couldn't wait to say so. Bring some pens and ink. Qin Zichuan spoke with great enthusiasm. In no time, the servant placed the brush, ink, paper, and inkstone in front of Qin Zichuan. Life is full of joy, do not let the golden cup empty against the moon. I am born with a talent that will be useful, and even if a thousand pieces of gold are scattered, they will come back again. When the pen falls, the pen stem breaks in response to the sound. Okay. Ching Chubi and his brothers clapped their hands and shouted loudly. Good poetry, good poetry. The onlookers, foolishly gazing at the scattered poetry, kept praising. Chang San Chang's face turned pale for a moment. These four lines of Qin Zichuan's poetry are impeccable and truly a masterpiece. It's almost impossible to write a better line than this poem. Suddenly, he found it difficult to get off while riding a tiger. Especially the voices of discussion around him were all praises of this poem, making him wish he could find a way to crawl in. Chang San Gongzi, I think you should kneel down and learn to bark like a dog. Ching Chubi looked up and laughed heartily. Don't deceive others too much, this poem is definitely plagiarized by this Shandong child. Chang San Chong pointed at Qin Zichuan and loudly rebuked him. Yes, this poem is definitely copied. The little attendant next to Chang San Chong immediately agreed. Qin Zichuan smiled and cursed in his heart. A group of ground beetle. Pen and ink serve. Qin Zichuan ignored Chang San Chong's presence in a magnificent way and waved his hand, shouting loudly. As the servant brought another top dot quality brush, Chang San Chong's heart suddenly thumped. Do these Shandong children still need to write poetry? A bad feeling surged in his heart in an instant. The onlookers immediately widened their eyes and stared fixedly at the pure white rice paper. Suddenly, there was a complete silence, and the needle could be heard falling. The young master wrote a hundred poems about drinking, and slept at a tavern in Chang'an City. The emperor calls out not to go to court, claiming that he is a wine immortal. Do you agree with it? Qin Zichuan waved his arm and the brush in his hand flew towards Chang San Chang's pale cheeks. Pop! The brush hit Chang San Chang's cheek fiercely. Ink splattered, not only dirtying his clothes, but also blackening his pale cheeks. The emperor's call is not to go to court, calling himself a deity in wine. Good poetry, so crazy. Poetry is like a person, this is definitely not plagiarism. Looking around the world, who can be more crazy and arrogant than this young master? The talented scholars around him praised Qin Zichuan's poetry greatly, and were even shocked by his arrogance. He not only slapped Chang San Chong in the face, but also hit Chang San Wuji in the face with a hard slap. Chang Sun Chong was immediately stunned. Shandong children bully people too much. It's like going crazy to the sky. After a brief shock, Chang Sun Chong pointed at Qin Zichuan and roared angrily. Are you still considered a young person without being arrogant? Qin Zichuan tilted his mouth slightly upwards and laughed wildly. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Renowned Chang'an you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Renowned Chang'an The Emperor calls out not to go to court, claiming that he is a wine immortal. What a domineering presence this is. How arrogant this is. A poem by Qin Zichuan expresses his arrogance and arrogance to the fullest. Especially with that stroke, it turned Chang San Chong into the biggest clown in Zueyin Tower. 
Brother Chuan is truly a divine being, I admire him. Ching Chimo said with great admiration for Qin Zichuan. Chang San Gongzi, why don't you shout, you're a dog, quickly. Ching Chubi pointed to Chang San Chang's ink stained cheeks and laughed wildly. You, you damn it. Chang San Chong reached out and touched his face, which immediately turned into a painted face. Kill them for me. Chang San Chong immediately became angry with embarrassment and shouted at the attendant beside him. Faced with such arrogant and arrogant Qin Zichuan, they were already about to explode their lungs. At this moment, Prince Chang San had an order, and everyone immediately rushed towards Qin Zichuan and the three of them rushed forward. The young master knows how to fight. Ching Chumo grinned, he he, and waved his fist before welcoming him. This kid asked me to come. Ching Chubi dared not fall behind with a loud roar, fearing that he would not have a chance to hit someone. Two little demon kings, like wolves entering a flock of sheep. Bang! Ah! This group of young masters with no power to bind chickens, along with a few followers, are not their opponents. Suddenly, there were constant screams in the drunken cloud tower. In the blink of an eye, everyone lay on the ground writhing in pain. It's really not worth fighting. Ching Chumo said with a lingering interest. I thought their bones were as hard as their mouths, but they turned out to be a bunch of cowards. As Ching Chubi spoke, he kicked the young master under his feet fiercely. I wonder what great works Chang San Gongzi has done in this situation and scene. Qin Zichuan asked the trembling Chang San Chong. You wait for me. Chang San Chong turned around and wanted to leave. Chang San Gongzi, please stay. As Qin Zichuan spoke, he blocked Chang San Chong's path. My poetry cannot compare to mine, and I cannot fight against my two brothers. Does Chang San Gongzi want to run away? Qin Zichuan said earnestly. Although his lips were covered in shallow smiles. But in Chang San Chang's eyes, there was a devilish smile. What do you want to do? Chang San Chong trembled and said. It seems like you lost. Qin Zichuan kindly reminded. Your poem is plagiarized, it doesn't count. Chang San Chong stubbornly retorted. Since Chang San Gongzi likes to play tricks, let's still compete with fists. Before Qin Zichuan could finish speaking, he heard a plop sound. Chang San Chang's legs became weak in fear and he sat down on the ground. I, I lost. Looking at the miserable looks of his companions around him, Chang San Chong was already scared out of his wits and stuttered. Chang San Gongzi, since you've given up, why don't you learn to bark like a dog? Ching Chubi shouted excitedly. I am a dog. Bring your name. Chang San Chong is a dog. Who is Chang San Chong? I Chang San Chong is a dog. Haha, <laughs> the onlookers, talented and beautiful, immediately burst out laughing. Amidst the piercing laughter, Chang San Chong and his companions fled in despair. The young master is truly talented. These two poems are simply unparalleled works. I don't know your noble name, young master. The talented people around were admiring Qin Zichuan. This is my elder brother Qin Zichuan. Ching Chubi tilted his head and introduced himself to the people around him. Yu Qi, the old demon, and my elder brother both lost the bet on the street, let alone Chang San Chong, who is a grandson. Today, he really took advantage of him. Ching Chumo shouted with immense pride. Is it because of Brother Qin that Lord Wei Qi is wearing underwear to wander the streets today? Brother Qin is indeed impressive, I admire him. Brothers, please help yourself. I still have a candlelight conversation with Miss Su Moon Wan. Qin Zichuan was too lazy to answer this group of ground beetle. He waved his hand and said. Then we won't disturb young Master Yaxing. As everyone read Qin Zichuan's masterpiece aloud, they slowly left. Qin Zichuan's masterpiece quietly spreads in Chang'an city. He asked Yu Qi Gong to stroll the streets. 
The story of making Changsan Chong a dog is even more talked about by the people of Chang'an. When he first arrived, he became famous in Chang'an. In no time, Su Moon Wan walked into Qin Zichuan's private room. The fluttering veil couldn't conceal her seductive body. Like a peeled lychee, crystal clear. The delicate cheeks without any makeup are even more charming. It makes people feel pity when they see it. Especially her big black eyes, as if she could speak, captivated the soul. What a beauty who brings disaster to the country and the people. Boss, today is really refreshing. Let me toast you. Ching Chubi said in great admiration to Qin Zichuan. Boss, I'll toast you too. Ching Chumo laughed heartily and agreed. Qin Zichuan was too lazy to deal with these two rough guys. Accompanied by a beautiful woman, it is natural to have a deeper understanding. Late at night, inside the palace. Two poems by Qin Zichuan were now presented to Li Er. To be proud in life, one must fully enjoy it. Do not let the golden cup empty against the moon. I am born with a talent that will surely be useful. Even if a thousand pieces of gold are scattered, they will come back again. What a masterpiece! Li Er couldn't help but sigh. These Shandong children are both skilled in literature and martial arts, they must be materials that can be made. But when he saw the second poem, the smile on his lips froze instantly. The emperor's call is not to go to court, claiming that he is a wine immortal. What a Shandong child, he doesn't even pay attention to me. Li Er slammed the table fiercely and said angrily. Within the Changsan Wuji mansion. You've ruined my face with things that have more than enough success and more than enough failure. Chang Sun Wuji raised his hand and slapped Chang Sun Chong hard in the face. What a Shandong child, please wait for me. Inside Li Jing's mansion. What a great poem. Li Xing Nan couldn't help but praise. Miss, have you fallen in love with this Shandong child? The maid beside joked. The emperor refuses to go to court and claims that he is a wine immortal. How could such a conceited bumpkin fall into the eyes of this young lady? Li Xingnan exclaimed angrily. Let Uncle Wei Qi wander the streets and even beat up Chang Sun Chong to see how he will explain tomorrow. Thinking of this, Li Xingnan's lips showed a hopeful smile. Drunken Cloud Tower. Ching Chumo and Ching Chubi, two brothers, drank happily with the company of the girls from Zueyin Tower. And Qin Zichuan naturally couldn't associate with these ordinary people, so he came to Su Moon Wan's chamber. I don't know your noble name, young master. Su Moon Wan poured a glass of wine for Qin Zichuan as she spoke. Qin Zichuan. But I prefer others to call me Chuanya. Qin Zichuan held a wine glass and stared at Su Moon Wan's deep career line, saying with a smile. Chuan Yi is talented and talented. I wonder if there are any other masterpieces. Can you please broaden my horizons for me? Su Moon Wan dared not look directly at Qin Zichuan's fiery gaze and said slightly coquettishly. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Distribution of Yuzhou Guardians at the National Gate You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Distribution of Yuzhou Guardians at the National Gate Under the Illumination of the Lights, Su Moon Wan, who appeared slightly shy, was particularly tempting. The two of them drank and recited poetry, giving off a sense of regret for meeting too late. This night, the two were destined to stay up all night. The next day. At the beginning of the morning court, Chang Sun Wuji took the lead in standing up. I impeach Qin Zichuan, a member of the Igwa Duke's clan. Chang Sun Wuji was the first to take the lead. Why did Lord Chang Sun impeach this Shandong child who first came to Chang'an? Li Er pretended to be confused and asked. Shandong children beat up their dogs in Zueyin building. Qin Zichuan wrote a poem at Zueyin Tower, but the emperor called out but did not go to court. He claimed that his master was an immortal in wine. This was a contempt for imperial power, and I pleaded with his majesty to punish him. As soon as Chang Sun Wuji finished speaking, 
a spokesperson spoke out to impeach him. I implore your majesty to punish the children of Shandong for their crimes and to uphold the country's authority. A dozen or so officials stood up and directly pushed Qin Zichuan to the forefront. The honest and honest Qin Xiong frowned tightly. He never expected that when Qin Zichuan first came to Chang'an, he was like entering a pit of fire at the same time. Your Majesty, these children from Shandong have just arrived in Chang'an, without any official or job responsibilities. I think these cowardly and cowardly people have eaten their fill. Ching Yao Jin glared fiercely at the officials and said. Chang Sun Old Fox, your gambling bet is not good. Why can't you afford to have a son? Wei Qi Gong said sarcastically while pursing his nose. I have heard that your son, who is not up to par, lost a bet with a child from Shandong and wanted to play tricks. He is better than others in terms of ink, but he can't beat the two young children from the old Qing family with his fists. He's still throwing a bucket now, it's really embarrassing. You, you. Chang Sun Wuji was immediately speechless. He has always been at odds with Yu Qi Gong and others. But Wei Qi Gong was also humiliated by this Shandong child, so he should be standing on the united front with himself. But why did he start to maintain this Shandong child? Yu Qi Lao Mo is not here to help Qin Zichuan. He simply wants to go against Chang Sun Wuji. I can't afford to lose and still want to bully others. My son is willing to lend a helping hand and has the heroic spirit of old Qing back then. Qing Yao Jin said, looking up and laughing heartily. Chang Sun Wuji's face turned pale and his whole body trembled with anger. But it's hard to argue. To put it simply, it's still my own son who is not up to par who deserves it. Shandong's children are talented and both skilled in literature and martial arts. It's just a bit too crazy. Li Er said slowly. Your Majesty, I have heard that Shandong children. What did you hear? Ching Yao Jin asked curiously. Is he still considered a young person without being arrogant? The official stuttered and said. This child must become a great weapon. As Ching Yao Jin spoke, he cast an envious gaze at Qin Xiong. Dalong has just arrived and does not understand etiquette. Please make amends, your majesty. Qin Xiong immediately pleaded for mercy for Qin Zichuan. Uncle Bao, it's not that I don't want to give him a promotion. It's just that he said the emperor won't come to court, and I'm really in a difficult position. His majesty Li Er pretended to be difficult and said. It is obvious that he has always held this poem by Qin Zichuan in his heart. I would like to inform your majesty that in my opinion, this son is young and reckless. It would be better for him to take up a position in the border and hone his skills. He will surely become a pillar of our Tang dynasty in the future. The cunning and cunning Chang Sun Wuji immediately dug a big hole for Qin Zichuan. Where should he go to hone his skills? Li Er nodded in satisfaction and asked. Why don't he go to Yu Zhou to guard the country's gates for his majesty? Chang Sun Wuji proposed. That's settled then. Li Erei hammered it firmly and said. Qin Xiong suddenly froze in place. He planned a marriage contract for Qin Zichuan, hoping that he would come to Chang'an to hold a position of official and semi-official. But your majesty actually asked him to guard the country's gates in Yuzhou. Isn't this pushing him into the fire pit? Chang Sun Wuji, who was standing beside him, suddenly burst into joy. Didn't you say that a dog is a dog? Then let you go to the border to guard the country's gates and be your majesty's watchdog. Li Manchin. Dad, does your majesty really want that Shandong child to guard the city gate of Yuzhou? Li Shengnan asked incredulously at Li Jing. Yes, we will set off today. What about our engagement? When Dalong first arrived in Chang'an, he was going to guard the city gate of Yuzhou. I feel guilty to Qin urge. Don't bring up the matter of getting married again in the future. Li Jing felt guilty and rebuked Li Shengnan. Even if I die, I will never marry that Shandong child. Li Xingnan exclaimed angrily. Qin Mansion. 
Qin Zichuan has just returned from Zueyin Tower to his mansion, ready to take a nap. But he sneezed wildly. Did Miss Su Moon Wan start thinking of me? Thinking of her seductive cheeks, Qin Zichuan couldn't help but reach out and tidy up his hairstyle. If I were to be a woman in my next life, I would definitely marry an excellent man like me. He was narcissistic when suddenly a servant came to report it. Young master, the master is looking for you. What is Uncle Zhu asking me for? In no time, Qin Zichuan arrived at Qin Xiong's study. Chuaner, your majesty has sent you to Yuzhou for training. Qin Xiong sighed and said. Your majesty asked me to become the grand governor of Yuzhou. Qin Zichuan suppressed the excitement in his heart and asked. No, it's not. Governor of Yuzhou. No, it's not. Have you crowned me king? Countless black lines suddenly appeared on Qin Xiong's forehead. Your majesty has asked you to go to Yuzhou to guard the country's gates for him. Qin Zichuan suddenly became confused. Qin Xiong explained in detail what happened in the morning court today, and Qin Zichuan was relieved. On the official road to Yuzhou, one person and one horse were pulled by the sunset by an old man. Qin Zichuan did not bring any followers and went alone to Yuzhou to guard the country's gates. Long grandson and old fox who suffered a thousand knives, please wait for me. Qin Zichuan muttered to himself while greeting the eighteen generations of Changsun Wuji's ancestors one by one. For three consecutive days, his buttocks were almost worn out and he didn't see any trace of Yuzhou. If we keep walking like this, before we reach Yuzhou, the young master will be stinky to death by himself. Qin Zichuan sniffed his sour clothes and muttered with a furrowed brow. It seems that the system's task reward has not been claimed. He had a flash of inspiration in his mind and quickly entered the invincible sun. In law system in his mind. Congratulations to the master for completing the system task and winning a lottery opportunity once. The pleasant prompt sound of the system excited him immensely. Hurry up and smoke. Congratulations to the master for obtaining the divine artifact. Fong Tian Hua Ji. Congratulations to the owner for obtaining the mount. Red Hair Horse. As the system beeped, Qin Zichuan looked up and laughed heartily. Then there was a flash of silver light, and two divine artifacts came into view. Is the system trying to make me the god of war in the Tang dynasty? Holding the Fang Tian Hua Ji in his hand, Qin Zichuan felt his whole body's blood boiling. System task. Guarding Yuzhou. Guarding Yuzhou. Sleeping trough. Is it possible that Turkic tribesmen are attacking? Suddenly, there was a thump in his heart. Looking at the red rabbit horse sitting down, he let out a loud, fight. In the vast expanse of yellow sand, Qin Zichuan held the Fang Tian Hua Ji and flew towards Yuzhou. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Are Han Chinese bones hard or bent knives hard? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Are Han Chinese bones hard or bent knives hard in the ninth year of Wuda? The Tang dynasty can be described as a tumultuous autumn. Li Er, who was killed by heaven, launched the Xuanwu Gate incident. And at the same time as Qin Zichuan was sent to Yuzhou for training. Jieli Khan took advantage of the turmoil in the Tang dynasty and personally led 200,000 Iron Cavalry to march south. He wants to bloodstain the central plains. Yuzhou the bloody sunset covered the earth with corpses everywhere. The strong smell of blood drifted far away in the wind. Dong. 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 The war drums outside Yuzhou are like thunder. Countless Turkic cavalry charged towards the city wall. Shout to kill. A scream of agony. Interwoven together, it makes one tremble with fear. Kill me. Capture the two-legged sheep in the city alive. There are delicate two-legged sheep in the city, warriors charge. At this time, the people in the city were no longer human in the eyes of the Turkic barbarians. 
they are two-legged sheep. Old ones can be grilled and eaten to satisfy hunger. Mothers and tender ones are used for enjoyment. The eyes of these Turkic barbarians emit a bloodthirsty light. They erected a ladder, raised shields, and scrambled to climb up the city wall. The wounded soldiers of Yuzho stood guard against the crumbling city wall. They had long forgotten how many times the Turkic cavalry had charged. They only remember to hold on and not retreat. Because behind them, there are their own wives, children, and children, and tens of thousands of people in Yuzho. They have no choice in this battle. Only by standing firm and not retreating. As the last rays of sunset disappear from the horizon. The gates of Yuzho collapsed with a loud bang. The north gate has been breached, run quickly. Hurry up. The Turkic tribesmen are coming in. Everyone, run towards the south gate quickly. You run quickly, I'll bring you to the rear. Brothers, kill me for the people of Yuzho. Qin Zichuan faces north all the way. But the further north you go, the stronger the bloody smell becomes. Is the Turks really heading south? Did Yuzho fall? Persist in Yuzho, young master has come to guard the city gate. Qin Zichuan silently prayed for Yuzho in his heart. The red rabbit horse seemed to feel the murderous aura in its owner's heart, with its hooves flying and leaving behind remnants. At this time, corpses were scattered throughout the city of Yuzho, and blood flowed into a river. The Tang dynasty soldiers who defended Yuzho were killed or injured countless times in order to cover the people's escape. On the street, a group of Turkic barbarians are slaughtering the city. Look, there's a group of two-legged sheep ahead. Surprisingly, there's still a mother. We have a taste test tonight. This group of Turkic barbarians laughed wildly as they chased after the crowd ahead. See where you're running. What a delicate two-legged lamb, let grandpa eat it well. A Turkic barbarian said with two reflective eyes. Faced with their beastly gazes, the little girl was so scared that she burst into tears. You beasts are not as good as miscellaneous creatures. You have the ability to charge me. A middle-aged woman spoke and hugged her daughter tightly in her arms. Seeking death. Before the Turkic barbarians could finish speaking, the middle-aged woman was struck and overturned in a pool of blood. Mother. Mother. The little girl shouted helplessly. I just like the way you cry and shout. The Turkic barbarians rushed towards the little girl eagerly as they spoke. Stop it. As the words fell, a group of wounded soldiers from Yuzhou rushed over. Kill me. The Turkic barbarians rushed over on horseback. After a charge, this group of Tang dynasty soldiers died and those who were captured were captured. Shit. A Turkic barbarian directly pressed the little girl to the ground and reached out to tear her clothes apart. A dog that's not as good as a beast, come to me if you have the ability. The captured Tang soldiers next to him roared angrily. Turkic miscellaneous, I asterisk your grandma. A hysterical roar sounded and immediately caught the attention of the Turkic barbarians. He is Li Dabiao, the captain of Yuzho. I saw him rushing towards the Turkic barbarians who were about to engage in animal affairs. You scumbag who received thousands of dollars. As his words fell, the Turkic barbarians were thrown to the ground by him. Go to hell with me. Li Dabiao opened his mouth and kissed the neck of the Turkic barbarian. Yes, he opened his big mouth and fiercely kissed the neck of the Turkic miscellaneous. Ah! With a painful scream sounded. Li Dabiao took a piece of meat from the Turkic barbarian with just one bite. Blood spurted out in an instant. He actually bit off the large artery around the neck of the Turkic barbarian. Ah! The Turkic barbarians tightly covered their necks and screamed in pain. And Li Dabiao lifted his proud head, that terrifying face covered in blood. That look of death as if returning home. That bloody mouth at this moment, Li Dabiao was like a demon from hell. The Turkic barbarians around were immediately stunned. Bang! 
As the sound of Turkic chaos falling to the ground fell, this group of Turkic barbarians reacted from the shock just now. Damn two-legged sheep, aren't you afraid of death? The Turkic barbarian, who had reacted, kicked Li Dabiao to the ground with just one kick and fiercely questioned him by stomping on his chest. In the life of my Han family's son, there was no fear of words. Li Dabiao swallowed the meat in his mouth and said disdainfully. Although trampled underfoot by the Turkic barbarians. But his face was filled with pride. As the pride of the people of the Tang dynasty. Being a proud son of the Han family. Damn Han people. The Turkic barbarian roared angrily and reached out to pull out the dagger from his waist. Pushi. 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 The sharp dagger stabbed into Li Dabiao's stomach. Blood instantly dyed his clothes red. But he couldn't pierce his pride as a Han. Our Han bones are much harder than your daggers. Li Dabiao laughed wildly. Then, wow, a mouthful of blood spat out. Captain. The captured soldiers of the Tang dynasty watched helplessly as the dagger entered and exited Li Dabiao's belly. They shouted one by one with crimson eyes and choked up. We Han people, how can we be afraid of these beasts? The surrounding Tang dynasty soldiers shouted hysterically. Their eyes are red. They have bulging veins. They treat death as if returning home. Lan Lan is also Han Chinese, and she is not afraid of these animals. The little girl reached out and touched her tears, then lifted her head and said. Faced with her lifeless expression. Looking at the gruesome corpse of one's own companion. These Turkic tribesmen have no interest in ravaging the Lan Lan. Slaughter all these damn two-legged sheep. The Turkic barbarians, led by them, roared angrily. As a Han Chinese, I may die without regret. The captured soldiers of the Tang dynasty shouted disdainfully in the face of the cold curved sword of the Turkic miscellaneous. Their voices are filled with pride. Their faces are filled with pride. I would like to see if it's your Han people's bones that are hard, or our Turkic warriors' machetes that are hard. The Turkic barbarian sneered and said. Thank you for the three recommendation tickets of Longshan Lao Tai. Today, there are more words. Bema Lao Tai should not break its promise, end of this chapter. Chapter 7 God of War Descends to Earth You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 God of War Descends to Earth Faced with the bloodthirsty curved sword, the captured soldiers of the Tang Dynasty showed no trace of fear. My bones are much harder than your knives. Li Dabiao tilted his head as he spoke, revealing his neck. He wants to use his own life to prove that his bones are harder than the machetes of the Turkic barbarians. Damn two-legged sheep. The Turkic barbarian roared angrily and then raised the sharp curved knife in his hand. Go to hell. As his words sounded, the curved sword emitting this bloodthirsty light ran towards Li Dabiao's neck and fiercely slashed it. The Tang dynasty soldiers around couldn't help but close their eyes. Tears welled up in an instant. They are not afraid of death. But he dared not see Li Dabiao die in front of him with his own eyes. Our Han people's bones will always be harder than your curved knives. Everyone was choking up and murmuring. They are determined to use their own lives, just like Li Dabiao, to prove that the bones of the Han people are harder than the miscellaneous curved knives of the Turks. Click. With a muffled sound falling, everyone couldn't help but open their eyes. I saw Li Dabiao with the pride of a descendant of Yen and Huang on his face, slowly closing his eyes. But the sharp curved blade was firmly stuck at his neck. The Turkic miscellaneous, with all his might, was unexpectedly stuck by Li Dabiao's bone. He proved a fact to this group of Turkic tribesmen with his life. The bones of Han people are much harder than curved knives. Captain. Big brother. Everyone choked up and shouted loudly. Their eyes were red, tears tearing through their weathered cheeks. Damn Han people. The Turkic barbarians roared in anger and embarrassment. 
I saw him pull out the curved knife stuck on Li Dabiao's bone, and then hit Li Dabiao's stomach with a thud, chopping wildly. He is venting his fear and humiliation in his heart. Come and kill me. There was originally a plan to kill me. My bones are even harder. The Tang Dynasty soldiers around were roaring with anger. They are eager to prove that Han Chinese bones are harder than curved knives. Kill. Kill all these damn Han people for me. The Turkic barbarians, led by them, roared angrily. But his words have not yet fallen through. A breath of death rushed towards me. The wind sounded as if it was about to tear apart the sky, and the warhorses of the Turkic barbarians sitting down roared incessantly. An unprecedented fear spread in the hearts of the Turkic barbarians around them. In addition to fear, their clothes were already soaked through with cold sweat. A silver light flashed by. Then I heard a poop sound. The Fong Tianhua halberd, carrying endless killing energy, pierced through the dim night sky and pierced through the chest of the Turkic leader. Bang! With a loud bang, the body of the Turkic leader was fiercely nailed to the wall. Under the mist of blood, the white eyes of the Turkic leader seemed to jump out. He didn't understand why he died until he died. Faced with this Fong Tianhua halberd emitting endless killing energy. Looking at the gruesome body of my own leader. The Turkic barbarians around instantly petrified. Even if they have a bloodthirsty nature. But in the face of this terrifying scene, their mouths were wide open, but they couldn't make a sound. Shocking. A deep fear instantly swept through their entire bodies. Their courage was instantly shattered. Is this a divine punishment from heaven? Can't even the heavens stop watching? Oh my goodness! You finally opened your eyes. After a brief shock, a Tang Dynasty soldier couldn't help but look up and howl. Who is the one coming? Hurry up and get out and suffer death. The Turkic barbarian, who had reacted, tightly grasped the curved knife in his hand and looked around cautiously. Dada dada. A sound of hooves came from the horses. The gradually clear sound of horse hooves entered the ears and fiercely stepped on the hearts of the Turkic barbarians. Who? Hurry up and get out of here. The Turks shouted in panic, covering up the endless fear in their hearts. In the darkness, Qin Zichuan, dressed in white armor, slowly caught everyone's eye. The arrogance of the world instantly dissipated. The endless murderous aura scared the Turkic barbarians back and forth. Along the way, Qin Zichuan was deeply shocked. That kind of anger that never existed before. That kind of unprecedented killing impulse. Filled with their passion. He felt like his body was about to explode. He wants to kill. Only blood can extinguish the endless killing and anger in his heart. He's the only one. Watching Qin Zichuan come alone, the Turkic miscellaneous finally breathed a sigh of relief. Kill him and eat meat. Slaughter all these damn Han people. Before the angry roar of the Turkic miscellaneous could subside, Qin Zichuan let out a loud roar. The Fong Tianhua halberd, which nailed the Turkic leader to the wall, trembled incessantly as if sensing the master's call. I saw Qin Zichuan jump up and stomp on a broken head of a Turkic. The white brain plasma mixed with fresh blood, splattering everywhere, creating a terrifying sensation. Then Qin Zichuan kicked fiercely against the wall with a loud bang. The wall collapsed with a loud bang. And he grabbed Fang Tianhua's halberd and turned around to fiercely chop at the heads of the Turkic tribesmen. Blood debt and blood compensation. Blood mist was flying, and Fang Tianhua's halberd directly split a Turkic mixture in half. Shocking. The gruesome scene before us made everyone's hearts tremble. Overlord. With a single blow, all living beings tremble with fear. The Turkic barbarians around seemed petrified. One by one, their mouths wide open, foolishly standing in place. Even if they were killed, they couldn't believe that the scene in front of them was real. But next, Qin Zichuan kept waving the Fang Tianhua halberd in his hand. Like a harvester, 
harvesting the lives of Turkic miscellaneous dogs. The blink of an eye. This group of Turkic miscellaneous pieces fell into a pool of blood. They couldn't believe it was true until they died. Qin Zichuan held the Fang Tian painted halberd and stood in the center of the body. Fang Tianhua's halberd kept ticking the blood. Like a mortal god of war. The soldiers of the Tang dynasty around each had their mouths wide open, as if they were holding an egg. They stared fixedly at Qin Zichuan in front of them, unable to believe what had just happened. With one strike, the Turkic miscellaneous pieces were chopped in half. Kill more than ten Turkic tribesmen in just one breath. Is it a heavenly deity descending to earth? After a while, a Tang dynasty soldier reached out and rubbed his eyes hard, pinching his thigh hard. The god of war descended to earth, and we were saved. Feeling the pain in his thighs, he realized that he was not dreaming and couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. The god of war descended to earth. The god of war descended to earth. The shouts kept coming and going, but they couldn't fully express the joy in their hearts. They are not happy that they have been saved. But they saw hope. Yuzhou is saved. The third watch is presented, brothers are happy. Please collect the old railway passing by. It would be better to give a ticket. The fan group 409-9663 is looking forward to the joining of old irons. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Jointly going to Huangquan You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Jointly going to Huangquan, Can we fight or not? Qin Zichuan let out a long, turbid breath, and his sharp gaze slowly swept over everyone's faces. War. 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 The soldiers around answered loudly. Blood debts must be paid with blood. Qin Zichuan roared. The endless killing intent spread everywhere again. Blood debt and blood compensation. Blood debt and blood compensation. Suddenly, the shout shook the sky. Although they were scarred and already exhausted. But as if Qin Zichuan, the god of war, had descended to earth, they once again saw hope. At this moment, their whole body's blood was ignited by Qin Zichuan. They have already set aside their own life and death. They only seek to blood wash the Turkic tribesmen and die on the battlefield. How many people and horses are there in the Turkic miscellaneous this time? Qin Zichuan asked lightly. Tens of thousands of iron cavalry. How many do we have? There's very little left. Are you afraid? Not afraid. Damn it. Qin Zichuan said this and jumped onto his horse. Chang'an. The night is deep, but the lights inside the Lijing Hall are brightly lit. Your Majesty, Yu Zhou is in urgent need. Li Jing, as the Minister of War, said with a furrowed brow. How many enemy soldiers and horses? The Turks repeatedly offended the border, and Li Er was not surprised this time. Jieli Khan personally led hundreds of thousands of troops to protect Yuzhou. Li Jing answered anxiously. What? Li Er immediately took a deep breath of cold air. If the border is lost, the Turkic barbarians will soon be able to point their swords at Chang'an. Li Jing gritted his teeth and said. These chaotic officials and thieves. Li Er roared angrily. Quickly announced that Fang Xianling, Du Ruhue, and Chang San Wuji have entered the palace. At this time, a group of women, children, and scholars were bound to the execution platform in Yuzhou City. Today we're going to celebrate the Chinese New Year. What a tender two-legged sheep. Let me enjoy it enough first, then I'll cook. The Turkic barbarians were discussing recklessly. You animals, you have the ability to come at me. A Tang dynasty soldier roared. A group of trash, trying to stop our Turkic cavalry. Another living two-legged sheep. Go see the king of hell. Just listen to a poop sound. This injured soldier was chopped and overturned in a pool of blood by the Turkic miscellaneous knives. A merciless beast. No, they're not even as good as animals. 
the scholars around shouted with tears in their eyes. They are scholars from Yuzhou. When the city gate was broken, they did not escape first. The defending soldiers bathed in blood to kill the enemy in the front, and they escorted the elderly and weak to escape from the rear. But now, they and these women and children have no chance to escape again. Are you afraid? An elderly master stood up and asked. Not afraid. Oath to die and coexist with Yuzho. His students stood on their left and right, waving their arms and shouting loudly. Baby, are you afraid? Mom, I'm not afraid. Good boy, we can go find your dad soon. The women in Yuzhou tightly hugged the child in their arms and said with a smile. They just smiled and tears ran down their cheeks. Some of them are daughter dot in dot law from Yuzho. Some are the loving mothers of soldiers from Yuzho. Now, facing the machetes in the hands of the Turkic barbarians. They have no trace of fear. They want to go to the underworld together with their children and their husbands. It is said that behind every successful man, there is an unknown woman. And at this moment, behind every man in Yuzho, there is always a woman willing to go to the underworld with him. They are unfortunate. They are even happier. I am a descendant of the Tang dynasty and a son of the Han family. How could I be afraid of these animals? The old man looked up and laughed heartily. His back, although already bent. But the waist is straight. I am a descendant of the Tang dynasty and a son of the Han family. The scholars of Yuzhou shouted together. I am a descendant of the Tang dynasty and a son of the Han family. The women and children of Yuzhou laughed and shouted. Faced with death, they were not afraid, but their mouths were filled with smiles. This is a glory from the bloodline. This is an innate pride. A bunch of trash. You're still talking tough when you're dying. I hope your bones are as hard as your mouth. The Turkic barbarian sneered disdainfully, his eyes filled with this bloodthirsty light. Slaughter all this trash for me and enjoy the delicate use. As the words fell, the Turkic barbarians around pulled out their curved swords from their waists. Ha <laughs> ha! Faced with the bloodthirsty curved blade, the old man looked up and laughed. The pure white beard swayed in the wind, exuding a fairy-like aura. A group of foolish animals, it's really ridiculous, ridiculous. They think the curved blade can make us surrender. Foolish. I, the people of the Tang dynasty, have the supreme bloodline. Even if I die, I will not yield. The words of the old man were like sharp knives piercing the hearts of the Turkic barbarians. The scholars and women and children around burst into laughter upon hearing it. Although they are unarmed. But those bursts of laughter were full of mockery and contempt. Kill. Slay all this trash for me. With a command, the Turkic miscellaneous wielded their machetes. Pushi. The Turkic barbarian slashed at the old man's neck. Why are these useless bones so hard? The Turkic barbarians were slaughtering and cursing loudly. It is said that a scholar is useless. But at this moment, they used their own blood and flesh to forge the backbone of this Han family son. A knife slashed at the scholar's body. With a single blow, it got stuck on the bones of the scholars. These Turkic barbarians will never understand that even the bones of the Han people are hard. Now it's much quieter. So many delicate two-legged sheep, we can slowly enjoy them. The Turkic miscellaneous charged at the women in Yuzho, drooling as they spoke. Their lewd laughter. That ferocious face. Like a demon from hell. But these women from Yuzho showed no signs of timidity. Sisters, even if we die, we can't be spoiled by these animals. Yes, I want to go to the underworld with my husband. I'm afraid my husband won't have anyone cooking on Huangquan Road. The group of Yuzho women holding young children walked slowly towards the Turkic barbarians as they spoke. Go to the underworld with your husband. Go to the underworld with your husband. Go to the underworld with your husband. 
They shouted as if facing death and rushed towards the sharp curved knife. Want to die? How could it be so easy? Brothers, prepare to enjoy these delicate two-legged sheep. This group of Turkic barbarians are drooling, and they can't wait to eat meat. Brothers, let them know what a Turkic warrior is. No one should compete with me for that tough-mouthed one. The Turkic barbarians took off their clothes and eagerly rushed towards this group of women. What a delicate two-legged sheep! A Turkic barbarian cut through a woman's clothes with the tip of a knife and said with his eyes lit up. But as soon as his words fell, he heard a puff sound. The woman held the child and thrust her chest hard, then collided with the sharp curved knife. Husband, I'm waiting for you at Nyha Bridge. Before the woman could finish speaking, she fell into a pool of blood. Thank you for the recommendation ticket of Weiguajin brothers and the support of the old irons. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Blood Debt and Blood Compensation. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9 Blood Debt and Blood Compensation There was no trace of fear on the woman's face. On the contrary, the corners of my mouth were filled with a happy smile. Husband, my child, and I are here. Our family can reunite soon. As the words fell, a woman from Yuzhou rushed forward with the curved sword of the Turkic barbarians. She fell into a pool of blood with a happy smile on her face. Pushi. Pushi. Faced with this group of Turkic tribesmen, the women of Yuzhou saved their chastity with their lives and defended the dignity of the Han people. The Turkic barbarians were immediately stunned. They never expected that not only the men in Yuzhou were not afraid of death, but even the women in Yuzhou were not afraid of death. Damn two-legged sheep! The Turkic barbarians roared angrily. At this point, they had no sexual interest at all, only anger. Anger despised. The humiliation of being ridiculed. I would like to see if your bones are hard, or if our Turkic warriors' swords are hard. I saw Turkic barbarians wielding knives and a woman from Yuzhou falling into a pool of blood. These damn Han people. Kill them all for me. Since we can't enjoy them well, then kill and eat their meat. The Turkic barbarians can no longer bear it. They waved their machetes and carried out a massacre against these unarmed women and children. At this moment, a shout of killing suddenly came from a distance. Kill. 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 The remaining women from Yuzhou were slightly stunned. Then they looked up and laughed heartily. They heard very clearly. This is the voice of Han people. Sisters, our Datang men have come back. Father and fellow villagers, we men from the Tang dynasty have come to avenge you. The woman from Yuzhou shouted loudly, looking at death as if returning home. They tightly hugged the child in their arms and held their heads high as they approached the Turkic swords. Pushi. Pushi. The massacre of the Turkic tribesmen continues. Women in Yuzhou fell to the ground one after another, with blood flowing into a river. A dog-like creature is not as good as a beast. Looking at the extremely desolate scene before him, Qin Zichuan's anger surged in his heart. These are a group of unarmed women and children. This group of Turkic miscellaneous people who eat human food but don't defecate actually attack women and children. Are they still human? They must die. Blood debts must be paid with blood. Qin Zichuan slammed his legs into the horse's belly. The red rabbit horse seemed to feel the anger in its owner's heart and rushed towards the front Turkic animal. Pushi. Qin Zichuan took his dog's life with a single blow. Not good. There's an enemy attack. The Turkic barbarians shouted in panic. Then they aimed their curved knives at Qin Zichuan. Die for me. As Qin Zichuan's words fell, Fang Tianhua waved his halberd in a circle and took away the life of a Turkic stray dog. Fang Tianhua waved his halberd non dot stop. Every dance takes away the life of a Turkic stray dog. The Turkic tribesmen around were immediately stunned. The city of Yuzhou has been breached, 
and more than half of the two-legged sheep guarding the city have already been killed or injured. Where did this fierce general come from? That white armor stained with blood. The square sky painted halberd, like the integrity of a god of death. He is definitely not Han Chinese. He is a demon from hell. Bloodthirsty demon. Quickly withdraw. Go and join the general. After a brief shock, a Turkic barbarian screamed in panic. But just as he was about to turn around and run away, Qin Zichuan ran towards him with the Fang Tian Hua Ji in his hand. Pushi. The panicked expression on his face had not yet dissipated, and his head had already fallen to the ground. Kill. Slaughter all the Turkic offal. These animals. Blood debt and blood compensation. The wounded soldiers behind Qin Zichuan roared angrily while killing them. Although they are scarred. Although they were already exhausted. But when they saw the corpses of women and children lying on the ground, anger replaced all the pain and exhaustion. At this moment, they forgot everything. They only know revenge. Blood debt and blood compensation. These Turkic tribesmen have already been scared out of their wits by Qin Zichuan, and they dare not fight anymore. They turned around and galloped away. But did they still run away? The situation immediately reversed. The Turkic miscellaneous pieces that were just full of killing energy instantly turned into sheep that could be slaughtered by anyone. Pillar, where's your brother? Sister-in-law, my brother died in battle. Daniel, where's your brother? My younger brother was shot dead by a Turkic dog with an arrow. The woman from Yuzhou suddenly burst into tears. Although they have already set aside life and death. But hearing the news of the death of one's own loved ones with one's own ears. But they can't accept it. Husband, my child, and I have come to accompany you. Old man, I have to give birth to a bunch of dolls for you in the future. These women from Yuzhou have already lost their families and lives, where do they have the idea of surviving? Your men are all good, they are heroes. You are the treasures they guard with their lives, their unwavering belief. How will you face them when the big grudge has not been avenged? You must live well, kill all the Turkic tribesmen in the world, and respect the heroic souls. Qin Zichuan twisted his heart like a knife as he looked at the women in front of him who were willing to die. Chang'an, within the Li Jing mansion. A father dot in dot law is reading the edict aloud. When the imperial edict was handed over to Li Shengnan, the father dot in dot law slowly left. Shengnan, going to Yuzhou is extremely dangerous. You must be careful. Li Jing reminded his beloved daughter Li Shengnan. Dad, don't worry, I will definitely defeat the Turkic vanguard and buy you time to mobilize troops. Li Xingnan said fiercely. She is not only the apple of Li Jing's eye, but also the first female general of the Tang dynasty. In this era of male superiority and female inferiority. She didn't learn to play piano, chess, calligraphy, and painting. Instead, she picked up a knife and gun and enlisted in the military. Tiger father has no dog daughter. In just a few years, she went from being the lowest level soldier to becoming the first female general of the Tang dynasty. You must pay attention to safety and bring Qin Zichuan back. When it comes to Qin Zichuan, Li Jing's heart is filled with guilt. That arrogant guy might have died long ago. Li Xingnan rolled his eyes and said angrily. What nonsense! Although Dalong comes from Lichen, Shandong, he is still your uncle Qin's nephew. Li Jing pulled his face and angrily rebuked. Uncle Qin and I have had a close relationship before. Even if you don't agree to this marriage, you can't ignore the comfort of the groom. You must live to bring him back. Save him and we will terminate our engagement. Li Xingnan said and had someone retrieve the armor. Wearing a red armor, it was difficult to conceal her graceful figure. The delicate cheeks were covered with a layer of coldness that repelled people thousands of miles away. Brave and spirited. At this moment, a sudden sound of hurried footsteps came from outside. 
Lord Li, according to your majesty's orders, the first female general of the Tang dynasty has set off quickly, and Yu Zhou has been lost. Before the figure of the father dot in dot law arrived, the urgent voice first reached the ears of everyone. What? Did Yu Zhou fall? Can Qin Zichuan still live? Thank you for the recommended ticket from Xiangzai. Today, the 10,000 word explosion was completed, exhausted into a dog. We apologize for any shortcomings. Old irons are happy. Fan group. 4099663, looking forward to the joining of old irons. To touch and feel large, end of this chapter. Chapter 10. The Man Who Killed You. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 The Man Who Killed You Within the Grand Governor's Office of Yuzhou. Turkic vanguard Sher Kalang is drinking and celebrating, rewarding the three armies. The flickering campfire, emitting a media aroma of grilled meat, and the sound of unrestrained laughter. Compared to the corpses scattered everywhere and blood flowing in a river outside, it seems out of place. At the center of the bonfire were a group of captured civilians and injured soldiers. Today, my Turkic warrior defeated the Han people. Whoever killed the most two-legged sheep, who would first enjoy the best two-legged sheep. As Sher Kalang spoke, he looked up and laughed wildly. Barbecue is just their appetizer, while the tender two-legged sheep in the crowd are their staple food. As a vanguard general of the Turks, Sher Kalang captured Yuzhou within two days. At this moment, the city was being slaughtered outside, but he couldn't wait to start celebrating. Killing all the two-legged sheep in the city is just a matter of time for him, not a concern. General, what should we do with these two-legged sheep? A Turkic barbarian stared fixedly at a little girl, drooling as he asked. Sher Kachong showed exceptional bravery in this battle, so General I rewarded him with this delicate two-legged sheep. Sher Kalang turned his head to look at his younger brother Sher Kachong and said with admiration. Thank you very much big brother. Then a drunken Turkic barbarian walked unsteadily towards the girl. What a tender two-legged lamb. I wonder how it tastes. Sher Kachong drooled and said. You can spare my sister and come to me if you have the ability. Suddenly, a little girl rushed out and stared at the insect with her big black eyes. Faced with the ferocious face of Scott, the little girl was not afraid. Lon Lon, hurry back. The girl shouted at her sister. Sister doesn't cry, Lon Lon protects you. As Lon Lon spoke, she walked slowly to her sister and reached out to protect her behind her. Little girl, don't be afraid. I won't eat your sister. I'll eat both of them. Sher Kachong said, looking up and laughing recklessly. Lon Lon, hurry up. As the girl spoke, she fiercely pushed aside Lan Lan's weak body. You have the ability to come at me. The girl shouted hysterically at the top of her throat. Don't worry. As Sher Kachong spoke, he couldn't wait to take off his clothes. Today, my Turkic cavalry achieved a complete victory. Braves, enjoy this delicate two-legged sheep to the fullest. Sher Kalang waved his hand and laughed heartily. Then a group of drunken Turkic barbarians stood up to search for their favorite prey. Shit. Ah. Don't. The sound of clothes tearing. The screams of a woman. Interwoven together, full of helplessness. Full of endless desolation. Damn it. You even bit me. The Turkic barbarian covered his arm and kicked a woman to the ground with a bang. Damn the old man. Another Turkic barbarian swung a knife and killed an elderly man from Yuzhou who was eager to protect his daughter. This group of inhumane Turkic barbarians showcased the wildness of animals to the fullest. Don't run away, little girl. I'm going to eat you alive. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't. As the girl spoke, she protected Lan Lan under her own body. The taste of eating together must be very delicious. Sher Kachong grabbed the girl's clothes and then tugged hard. With a loud, chi-la, sound, the girl couldn't help but cry. 
you guys are not as good as animals, I'll fight you. The girl lifted her foot and kicked the most vulnerable part of the insect fiercely as she spoke. Ah! A pig-like scream rang out. Sher Kachong covered his crotch and curled up on the ground like a soft-footed shrimp, writhing in pain. Kill her for me! Sher Kachong shouted in anger and embarrassment. Brother, you're still too young. Brother teaches you how to eat. Sher Kalang threw the wine jug away and got up to walk towards the girl. He lifted his foot and fiercely stepped on the girl's chest, bending over and lifting Lon Lon up. Lick the bloodstains off your boots, or I'll tear her in half. Sher Kalang said with a fierce expression on his face. Sister, don't do it. Lon Lon is not afraid of death. Lon Lon said out of breath. Lon Lon. Watching her younger sister being carried by the Turkic miscellaneous, the girl burst into tears. Warriors, tonight this general will teach you how to enjoy this delicate two-legged sheep. Sher Kalang stared fixedly at the girl's exposed snow-white skin, drooling as he spoke. Then the Turkic barbarians around burst out laughing wildly. Their carnival is about to begin. At this moment, I heard a poop sound. The head of a Turkic barbarian slowly rolled to the feet of Sher Kalang. What sound? Sher Kalang asked in confusion. When he saw that the head under his feet was from his own tribe, he couldn't help but tremble. Everyone be vigilant. Sher Kalang casually threw Lan Lan and angrily shouted with a drawn knife. In the darkness, Qin Zichuan, dressed in white armor, slowly approached. The white armor stained red with blood. The Fong Tian painted halberd emitting bloodthirsty light. Under the light of the bonfire, he was like a demon from hell. Who's here? Shi Kalang shouted at Qin Zichuan. The person who killed you. Qin Zichuan stared fixedly at Shi Kalang and said coldly. Blood debt and blood compensation. The soldiers of Yu Zhou behind Qin Zichuan shouted hysterically. Shi Kalang couldn't help but let out a thud in his heart. Aren't these Tang Dynasty trash all dead? Isn't my Turkic warrior slaughtering the city? Where did this group of people come from? I am the Turkic vanguard Sher Kalang. Be wise and kneel down to die. Sher Kalang roared angrily at Qin Zichuan. How can a group of wounded soldiers and defeated generals be compared to the Turkic warriors? Die for me. Before Qin Zichuan could finish speaking, Fang Tianhua's halberd flashed by with a bloodthirsty light. Be careful, big brother. Sher Kachong suddenly got up from the ground and blocked in front of Sher Kalang. But before he could finish speaking, the blood line on his neck grew thicker and thicker, and his head fell to the side with a bang. One hit, just hit your head. Quickly withdraw. After a brief shock, Skola immediately ordered. At this moment, he ignored his brother's corpse and turned around to run. Kill them all. Blood debt and blood repayment. Qin Zichuan roared angrily. Blood debt and blood compensation. The Tang Dynasty soldiers behind him waved their weapons and launched a massacre against the Turkic barbarians. Qin Zichuan rushed at the forefront, while Fang Tianhua waved his halberd non. Stop. Every time it falls, a Turkic dog's head will surely land. At this moment, these arrogant Turkic barbarians became the two-legged sheep in their mouths. This is our Han army. Our reinforcements have arrived. We're saved. The captured people couldn't help but cry with tears in their eyes. End of this chapter